everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to our four or four series. Yes, we are going to work on layout three today and I can't believe how fast this series is going. Just everything just goes by so fast, but that means you're having fun. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to mention something right off the bat is that along with our four for four series and we're kind of doing Christmas pages. If you want to do some more Christmas pages or see another series that we're working on right now, we are doing record this December. And even though December has already came and went, that doesn't mean we're not still working on this series. And this project is something that honestly can be done in an afternoon, no joke. So hop over and I'll have the playlist li linked below. And so look up that record December. Awesome project to do. And it is also so fun to record the story while you're living it. Love that. Love that. Okay. So now let's start talking about what we have <laughs> in store. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that in this series, you know, the four for four, we pick out four papers, we work on four layouts, and along with that, we increase the number of photos as we go along. And so in layout one, we did one photo, layout two is two photos, if you choose to go that approach. And then of course, today we're going to be doing three photos. Okay, now show you what I'm going to be working on because we're going to talk about photos in just a few minutes. Okay, so we have three pieces of paper. Our number one paper will not make the cut this layout, but that's okay. It will come back next one. Okay, so for layout three, you're going to need three pieces of paper and I will have it listed below, so no worries. And for our number two pattern, which is my pine cones, because I have my cheat sheet right here. Yes, our number two pattern is going to be this one half by 12. And then our number three pattern is going to be the bigger piece. That's going to be your six by 12. And then your number four paper is going to be your four by 12. So a half by 12, a six by 12, and a four by 12. And of course, you know, these are just beautiful in and of itself in this size because you can tell as I laid those down, what are we building? A happy horizontal. <laughs> It doesn't get any easier than that. And I think that's probably why I am a horizontal gal because of the 12 inch format. No matter how you cut those, it just makes for a pretty page and it covers up the base of your page very quickly. Okay, so that right there, and we'll just take it as far as we can. And we will take this half right there to seam, and that is a happy horizontal. Yes, put your photos here, title here, journaling, and you're done. That is how quick, <laughs> and that's why I like the happy horizontal. But, you know, we have to give options, okay? And so, of course, with that, you can absolutely do this uh, in the middle, happy horizontal, or you can also shift it up and then shift it down. Okay, so that's three options and all you did was just put your paper, <laughs> that's all you did is put your paper down. And then of course we can do the vertical. Now I wanna talk about something because this is a question that one of my lovely subscribers, Teresa had asked when we were cutting the papers. And she said it was a little difficult because what if you have a directional paper and in this case I did, I had my Christmas trees or pine trees, whatever you wanna call them. And she said, well, how do you know which way you wanna cut that because you don't know how you're gonna do your layout. And I always say cut your papers in your most used style and for me that's vertical for some people it would be vertical so I would have cut my trees going this way okay and so that is how you're doing it when you're you know prepping and planning a kit and some pages always cut your papers in the style that you're most comfortable with and also to what you like the most and so I wanted to do a vertical layout since my last two is horizontal so I will show you what you can do with this piece of paper and I specifically want to to show Teresa because this is in horizontal because that's the way my pine trees are but I can absolutely use this in a vertical okay so there's no wrong way to cut your papers and there's no wrong way to uh, use them or even if I cut this in a horizontal I can still use it in a vertical and I will show that okay so this of course you can shift it to the left and then you shift everything to the right and then you do the hokey and <laughs> yeah you do the hokey pokey Oh man, I'm getting too silly, but I love this series. I love this forma, formula. I was just talking to someone this morning and I said, isn't this formula so great because it's so quick. You can just get to playing and that's the fun part. Yes. And then of course you can absolutely put it in the middle and do the band. Okay. And now along with that, I mean, that's a very, very pretty page. This is a very, very 
fast two page okay go with me on this and so basically i'm taking the six by twelve making it a four by twelve along with this four by twelve so you could cut it two two inches off okay and then you would repeat this there's your left page there's your right page now tell me that isn't quick a four by twelve a four by twelve with a half by twelve in the middle yes even if you're not even doing the four by four series that is a quick page and then of course you can shift it up shift it down but that makes for a very fast two page yes absolutely love that that is one way to take a 12 by 12 piece of paper and make it stretch yes and we'll talk about that coming up in a series coming up for 2019 so excited okay i'm getting sidetracked <laughs> okay so along with that in this series we've been talking about overlapping and spacing and uh swapping that's what we've been talking about and so that's exactly what i was showing here is that i was overlapping so that six by 12 now became a four by 12 and i put that in the middle and then of course you can shift this up and shift it down shift it left shift it right you get the idea okay and so then also too you can do spacing okay and with overlapping okay i want to show you this for overlapping you can put this in the middle now my christmas trees are going one way but it doesn't matter and then you can overlap that and you could overlap that okay and you say well that makes for a strange design this makes for a very clean minimalist simple page okay and you could absolutely take your half by 12 and put it there but you can do that in a vertical and you could bring and i have three photos here but i gotta talk about that in a minute and you could bring your three photos and you could put a title here and journaling down here but of course that's doing the band but we're doing the overlapping and of course you know with that you can add some border stickers and you could add some ribbon <laughs> just keep on going okay and that is in a vertical but then you can also go horizontal and just keep building with that with your overlapping overlapping with paper overlapping with ribbon overlapping with washi tape yes so don't forget to overlap with one or all three okay and uh, someone else had said this morning that she had worked on page one and two and that even though you're working with the same papers that your layouts don't look the same and that is absolutely why I love using quick formulas like this okay so with that uh, overlapping don't be afraid to overlap one or all three and then also two with spacing okay so I have branches here and I have Christmas trees here and if I was to use these two pieces in a horizontal I would put the green on the bottom and why would that be well not only is green that kind of the heavier color okay to me it feels better on the bottom but also because of my trees they have trunks so trunks would be on on the bottom and the branches would be on top that's how you would see it in real life and that's just how my brain does it but there is no rules there are no rules no okay so what was I talking about it's spacing okay so I could absolutely take this clear to the top and I could bring my trees clear down to the bottom okay and then what you're doing is that you are wallpapering that 12 by 12 cardstock base and then you could just keep building and building and building and you could cover up that whole page and that's what I mean by spacing you can leave some space open let's put some gold up here Okay, we could even build on top of that. Now we're going to overlap. There I'm overlapping some. And then we just keep filling up. Okay, now you say, well, I might not have enough things to fill up. I mean, isn't that pretty? I want to show another option for that because I love that. But don't forget, you have your bonus sheet to play with too. You could always cut a section of that if you wanted to fill in that space. But honestly, we wallpapered that. Is that not pretty? I want to show something else. Okay, so let's say if we put the paper down here. And we have this whole space at the top okay and you could absolutely leave this half by 12 here to cover up that seam nothing wrong with that and then we simply get to playing with washi and stickers <laughs> and we could even put in some ribbon i'll overlap that i love overlapping things okay and then we have some ribbon we could put in here oh wait i have some brown ribbon why not play with this for a change if i bring this down just to tear it and you see what I'm saying there I took all three of those elements and you can just and that's good for a two page you can just extend everything to the right so don't be afraid to space your papers and then fill in with whatever supply you wish to okay and then also to swapping you do not have to use 
this one half by 12. This is pine cones for me. If that's your one half by 12 is not something you want to use for the photos that you want to uh, record this time. You know what I say? I say swap it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just let it go to the side. I mean, look how pretty that is. Golden green. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes. Okay. Or let's get some more Christmas look. Let's put that in. So you see what I'm saying? I can forego this. Okay. Because I even have some leftovers from layout one and I can just keep that together and take it to layout four. Okay. And then it may not even land on any layout. That's okay. We have cards coming up. So I may do that. I may not even use this one. It depends. It depends on my mood. Yes. Sometimes I like to get them on. Sometimes if it's not tickling my fancy, there's nothing wrong with swapping things out. And then also too, say this four by 12 is not what you want cut something from your bonus sheet or if you pulled some scraps look through that if you pulled some six by six papers yes you can absolutely replace this six by twelve right here by with two six by six papers easy peasy okay so that is simply what we're going to do we're just going to play and i'm going to go in the vertical design on purpose just to show a vertical page in the series and so let's talk about photos for a minute here is the background i'm going to use now, I have to say right off the bat, just this and of itself, I put one photo down, I'm good, I'm done. <laughs> I love wood grain papers, okay. So what I'm going to be playing with is three photos, okay. Now, I wanted to show how you can get a uh, Polaroid or a 4 before. Uh, uh, when you're printing photos, okay? Now, I print um, a lot of my photos at home, and this is how I make four befores. I just wanted to show this in case it would spark an idea for you to play around with your photo options. And uh, for my software, I use my Fine Pix Studio. It's through my Fuji camera, and then, of course, my Epson Picture Mate, okay? And so I have another photo that I'm going to be using for the layout, but I can't show because it's about uh, mailing Christmas cards and ordering gifts online, and there's a little bit of personal info, but it will be three of this type of picture. Okay. And so this of course is just a four by six print. And so then how do I get them to look like a four by four? Okay. And so I did this a few years ago. I figured out how to do it. And then I made notes and I put it on the back and I keep this as, as my template and I keep it near my picture mate and my photo, you know, my ink supplies and things like that. So I know how to do this. And so I simply in the Epson Picture Mate, there is an option, or with selfie, uh, selfies or Canons uh, printers, there is an option where you can do borders, okay? And so to get uh, a border, you basically will set a margin at three. That's the that's the basic uh, setting is three. And so, of course, you know, you'd have three, in, uh, three here, three here, three here. And I think that goes by, I don't know, it was just a margin of three. And then, of course, the rest of this photo would extend out. And I would have a border the whole way across. But if you wanted to do a four before, okay, is that you could absolutely, and I have mine going in this direction, okay, that's a vertical shot, okay. And so what you do is you come here and you again would select border option and you would put three, three, and three, and then your bottom or your left, yeah, I have the top or the bottom margin. It doesn't matter whether it's this here or down here. I have a margin of 65, okay. So I have a border here, a border here, and a border here, and those are all margins at three, okay. Let me point to that so you can see what I'm talking about, okay. Three, three and three. Now down here, okay, this empty space, and this is how exactly it printed out of my picture made. This is a margin of 65. Okay. So when you have that option to select borders, play around with those margins because you can even get a five by five on here out of a four by six print. I hope this is making some sense in our photo series. I'll try to spend a little bit more time showing this, but honestly, for a lot of you gals that already know how to use the picture mate and your Canon selfies and things like that, you can go into your border options and play along with them, you know, play around with them. And then on your top or your bottom, either one, it doesn't matter which one you pick, you can select a margin. Now this is 65. Three, 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 and a 65. And see what I did is I made notes. Three margins equal three. One margin equals 65. It doesn't matter if it's top or bottom. Trim leaving a white edge and that will give me that print right there. Okay. And that is from your Epson Picture Mate or your Canon Selfie or whatever. Whatever printer you have that you can select margins. Okay. And that's how you get a four before. And so that is what I'm going to be playing with 
And again, I'll cover that again in our photo series, which that is not too far from the horizon. It's coming up. And so I will be using three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to cut this and I'll be using four befores on my layout. And so I wanted to show that because that is how I get a four before using, you know, my own printer at home. I don't I send them off. I do that. And so just play around with those margins and see what you get for different size because what happens is when you're playing around with these margins you can get more photos on a page you don't sometimes have to go to a two-page layout if you reduce the size of your photos and not everything has to be in wallet this is a nice size print I can clearly see everything I want for my layout but I don't have to have it in a four by six size okay I just wanted to show that option and that is what I'm going to be playing with I have three photos and I probably will use I'll just use this one for visual for filming but what I'm going to be doing um, again it has you know personal info actually it has uh, it has some uh, scrapbooking friends address <laughs> sitting on the table and I don't want to show that on film okay and so I'm going to be doing three photos and they will be on this size and I'm probably going to do a vertical so so fun to play with that and I think I'm going to dig into my kit a little bit more and see what embellishments I have to play with yes of course I spy D's and I think I have to get those on there. I think so. With that pine cone paper or the pine trees, I think so. Okay, so I'm just rambling at this point. <laughs> okay, I love scrapbooking. I love this hobby. I love that I have people that love this hobby as much as I do. So come back and I will have a finished layout in this series using three photos. And uh, we'll see what we're going to do with that paper. Okay, hang on. Okay, we are back with layout three done with three photos. So excited about that because I love how this page turned out because I actually documented some things that I do during my Christmas and I titled it Christmas Checklist. And I'll talk about more about that in just a minute. So where did my papers land? Well, you can see that I absolutely have my half by 12 uh, right here going vertically. I have my four by 12 going here vertically and then my six by 12, well, what did I do? I certainly cut that in half at six inches and then I turned that horizontal horizontal pine cone piece that I had and I turned it into vertical and that's all I simply did now the beauty of that is is because this is a tone on tone paper you can't even see where my seam is because I honestly had to look myself and I'm looking at it in person where was my seam and my seam is right here and you can't even really see it so that is how I wanted to show that if you when you're making your kit and you cut your papers one way, especially if you have directional papers or anything, and you're like, well, I don't want it in a horizontal, I want it in a vertical, that's what you do. Just cut it in the middle and create a seam, and half of the time you can't even notice it. And honestly, in real life, you can't even see where that seam is. So worked out very well. And then, of course, you see that I shortened it because it just looks like a block instead of a horizontal band. And so that's all I simply did, and I layered them on top of one another to get my design for my page and of course there are my three photos now I wanted to talk about I have some notes here that remember in the last layout in layout number two I showed that with my title that because I use different fonts that I didn't have to worry about spacing I wanted to show in this layout and of course I did my title in a vertical fashion too something different is that I absolutely created a space in my title so I had room for an embellishment so not only did I use a different font for my two words because it says Christmas checklist I absolutely left a little bit of an extra space and I put an embellishment behind that and then on top of it. So that is another way you can do a title. It just doesn't have to be all alphas. You can absolutely add some embellishments to your title. And this is a good way if you want to bring in a color or introduce something in your theme of your page. That's a good way to do it. Put it right in with your title. And then also to something fun, if you want to notice it here, is that I absolutely use an exclamation point in substitution of an I. And sometimes I'll do that if I'm running out of eyes. I'll use an exclamation point. Or sometimes, in this case, I just wanted to do it for fun <laughs> because my Christmas checklist is something I really rely on. And so I absolutely instead of an I I use an exclamation point just something fun to do okay so now what do I have up next is oh what do I have here okay so my crocheted ribbon because I did that uh, I absolutely wanted to say that when I use ribbon and if you'll notice this is a crocheted ribbon 
So in order for this to stay put, because this isn't going to wiggle or move at all in my page, see, it's stationary, that uh, it comes with this transfer paper on the back. And of course, if I pull that back, there's adhesive. Well, guess what? Sometimes that adhesive doesn't stay sticky very long. And so even though it has adhesive, I still use score tape. And for me, when I'm doing something like this, I will absolutely take my score tape and I will put it on my paper first just like that, and then I would lay my ribbon on top of it. That's how I find to get a very straight edge for ribbon. I put my score tape down first, and then I'll flip this over, and you can see that I absolutely just flipped it over to the back, and then I used washi tape to secure those ends, because ribbon will pop up if you don't secure the ends when you put it in a page protector. Okay, so that is how I used ribbon on this page, and I love it because of what I had in my photos. I thought it looked really nice with that. And, of course, who does not like crocheted red ribbon? No, for the holidays, is that not perfect? Yes. Okay, so now I wanted to say that I used and broke out some bling-bling, some sequins on this page, and I wanted to say why did I want to do that because, and why you can use sequins. Uh, because on this page I had the colors of brown, green, and red, and then of course you know, I was using gold, so the gold sequins work good. But sometimes if you want to bring forth another embellishment, but yet you don't want to bring forth another color, uh, sequins or anything of metallic nature will help with that, because then it gives you some wiggle room to play with some embellishments, and I didn't want to add another I didn't want to add anything more red. I didn't want to add anything more green. So gold sequins or any metallic sequins is the answer for that. Or any metallic embellishment for that matter. Okay, so now let's talk about this page for a minute because you can see where my three photos landed. And of course I talked about in the previous segment about these are four before prints and how I went about doing that. And again, we'll talk about more of that in our photo series that is coming up. But on this page I have, let me get my little pointer here is that I have eight visual triangles on this page. And I want to go over that because a lot of people like to see uh, what I mean by visual triangles and the different type of embellishments and product you can use to create a visual triangle. Okay, so I have eight on this page. Okay, so it's almost like I spy. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Okay, so first of all, and I have a little bit of my photo covered here because it has some addresses, is that I have these tiny little green enamel dots on these tabs, and I'm going to show a little how I do these tabs if you want to hang on to that. If not, that's okay. But uh, I have these little, uh, little tiny little green enamel dots, so that right there is a visual triangle. Okay, and then of course my burlap bows. I got forth that brine a little bit, and that those burlap bows. They make a visual triangle. And then, of course, I added these snowflakes. Actually, these were leftovers from my Record December page that was just on my desk. I wanted a little bit more white, and all I simply did was adhere those snowflakes. And then, of course, my sequins. Okay. Now, notice where the sequins are. They are here. They are lead into the page. And then I have sequins here. And then I have sequence here that leads into the title. So I used them on purpose. I didn't just uh, lay them down. I wanted to introduce, uh, in, you know, introduce to the photos. And then, of course, I when I did my photos, I had a little bit of empty space here. So it was a filler. And then, of course, it, down here it introduces my title. So I used them you know, on purpose in that visual triangle. And then, of course, I have my three tabs, okay, which I made that out of a pocket page card. <laughs> I'll talk about that in just a minute. And then my label stickers, of course, visual triangle. And then, of course, my text in red. Okay, so I have text here in red, 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 and even my journaling, I made it in red to complete and make my visual triangle because, see, I have text here and here and here and here and here, and it just keeps the eye moving the whole way around the page, and that's why I purposely put my journaling in a red color uh, on my font, and I think I used Bookman Old uh, Style for that font. It's a free font you can find, and then the last visual triangle I have is my photos. Okay, and so when you have three photos, that is an absolutely good way to use an odd number of photos is put them in a visual triangle, and that's exactly what I did. Okay, so that is all I have for this page as far as, uh, you know, the three photos, three layouts, and what did I have left over? 
this is all I have left over. <laughs> and this came, I think, from Lay at One. I had some extra pine cone pieces. I used them to make my tabs. And so I'll show that here in a minute if you want to hang on. And I'm just going to show just a little bit how you can make your own tabs out of paper you already have laying on your desk. Yes. <laughs> so I'm going to show that. Uh, just a quick embellishment, cheap embellishment. And it just helps you uh, put, have a place to put some word uh, stickers, word labels, that type of thing. But this is all I have left over uh, from all my cut papers is this little bit right here. And you know, I, I may be able to get this on the next page because I think my uh, next page will be about decorating the home. So I think I will definitely use those. So that's fun to see that. And then also too, I wanted to say my wood grain background paper is a Cartabella paper, of course, because it is such a nice weight. And it came from the work hard, play hard. And the back of it, you can see, was the cut apart. So that is the wood grain. Okay, so if you want to hang on for a minute, I'm going to show you how I did my tabs. But if not, come back in a few days. We will be working on layout four. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so now let's talk about these tabs for a minute. Because you see that I have them here, here, and here. And they're basically like a little topper for my photos. Okay, and so what did I do? Uh, well, what did I do and how did I do it? <laughs> okay, so I had in my kit, I put some of these uh, pocket page cards. And so when you look at something like this, don't think of it as just a 4 by 6 journaling card or a pocket page card. You have to use it in a 4 by 6 manner. No, what I saw was I saw this gold foil and you can do a lot with gold foil. And so I had one that had stripes. Okay, and so what I did was I cut out the stripes of this gold foil, and then that is what I did to make these tabs. Okay, right there. I just took that stripe off of that pocket page card and made a tab. And how did I do that? I simply just cut this rectangle, and then I cut them the size I wanted, and I simply used my corner rounder. That's all you have to do to make tabs is just whatever paper and a corner rounder, and that'll make a quick tab for you. And then I also... I had this pine cone paper that was left over from a free previous page and I just cut that down and then I put my word stickers, which those came from Simple Stories, this line right here. Beautiful reds. What was that? Homemade Holiday. Yes. Was that the same line? It looks like it's the same line. Homemade Holiday. Okay, and they were Simple Story stickers. And so then I uh, used, I just cut these into little more tabs as well. And then if you'll notice here, I didn't uh, corn, I did not use the, uh, this thing, <laughs> the corner rounder. I did not use it on the pine cone, but you could if you wanted to. It just emphasizes that, that shape if you want to. But I just kept them as little rectangles, and then that pine cone paper is what I put my word stickers on. So I absolutely just use a pocket page card, a leftover piece of scrap, and a sticker, and I made those tabs. And of course, you know, the corner rider, which this is one thing for years I would have with my punches. And once I started putting this tool on my desk and I leave it on my desk permanently, actually it sits right where my adhesives are. You can do so many things with this corner rider. So just a little thing. You don't need a big honking corner rider like the corner chomper and all that. Those are great. But a simple little one, they still have these at Hobby Lobby. Okay. So this is a nice little tool just to have sitting on your desk permanently. And so that's how I did. That's made those tabs just out of one one pocket page card and actually this is what I have left over from it I just it was just gold foil stripes that's all that was and of course you know I added my burlap bow got a little green enamel dot on her you know bling bling make it pretty and that's how I did that okay so that is all I have for this layout come back in a couple uh, days we'll have a little bit of time in between because we have some other things going on we have some other things coming up it's the new year and that means some new things absolutely so come back to RTS because you never know what we're gonna learn bye